Hi, Thumos, gentlemen, and welcome back. By the way, I hope you're doing well, man. I'm speaking to you, you know. Speaking to you, bro. Speaking to you. <laughs> speaking to you. Bro, it's so crazy, man, that we're supposed to know how to function in a world with billions of people. You get popped out, you grow up, you kind of just learn how to function in that world. What's right, what's wrong. What's okay, what's normal, what's weird, what makes you seem like an idiot. <sighs> you know? And if you think about it, man, it's like, I mean, dude, th this is an example. It almost seems like the mask, right? By the way, if you're not wearing a mask, when you go out and you're making a big old hooting and hollering, that's beta. Okay, the, oh, my freedom, my freedom. Stop that shit, dude. I mean, if you got to wear a mask to go work out and you're going to say it's beta to work out with a mask on, you are the beta because you are not working out in the discussion. So, but what I'm saying, though, is the mask is kind of like this thing, like a, like a, physical manifestation of something that comes to be that is accepted when will it not be normal to wear a mask interesting same thing with a lot of the social norms that we've grown accustomed to it's like man it's it always blows my mind that the very first thing that people ask each other is this is the majority. What do you do for work? Why is that the actual first question that you meet? You meet someone, you ask them their name, and then you, you start to build a rapport because, you know, we want to build a rapport. We ask, what do you do for work? What kind of question is that? There, you don't think there's a better question? What about, what about your happiness? How you doing, man? Are you happy? How's your happiness? What about this? How you doing, man? How's your mental health? How's your mental well-being? You doing okay? No, it's what do you do for work? This question we ask. Why do we ask this question? We ask, what do you do for work? It's sort of like, okay, where are you? What What's your status? How do you make money to live? How do you make money to live? Do you make more money than me? <laughs> you know, you kind of get you kind of get an idea. What's your education level? Are you smart or are you dumb? Actually, this is starting to seem like a good question. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. It's like it's so normal to ask that question. And it and I think though these these customs, I mean, they kind of keep us they're brief, shallow interactions with the humans that are in our immediate environment. So we kind of have small talk. And what I think though, is that a lot of guys these days, they struggle with how do I function in a world where there's this many people? Well, first off, you're not supposed to care about this many people. You're, you're supposed to care about a small number of people. You can remember, you know, what is it, 150 names? Probably more, but you can... How are you going to get to know more than 150 people? Like, really care for them. You're not. It's too big. So, now you introduce cars into the equation. And now you can drive to a new area where there's a million more people. Thousands of other people that you've never met in your life. How are you supposed to care about these people? You're not. You can't. 
so we abide by the customs. We abide by kind of the norm, the status quo, how to act. And what I really think, though, that would benefit many of us is to to just be aware of these these normal ways of functioning, your standard way of being. Now, a lot of people are afraid, I think, to seem like an idiot or to seem stupid or weird. You know, weird. You don't want to be weird. But, like, like think when you go out on the first date, you do your hair perfectly. You put on your best wardrobe, your best clothes, the nicest cologne you have. You put on that daddy, uh... I don't even own any of that cologne. What am I talking about? But I know it's a good cologne. It's very expensive. It's diesel. Is it di- No, diesel's not that, that good. What is this cologne? You put on your best everything, and then you go, and you present, you know, the best possible image of you. It's still just this image. It's, a, it's this mask, you know? It's like a mask. And so we always have this mask that we're wearing. The mask doesn't come off. I actually still struggle with this, but I think knowing that there is a mask that you wear, but you can choose not to wear like a fully, you can choose not to wear like a full freaking mask, dude. You know, I mean, you probably don't want to go out and fart in public for obvious reasons. But the more that you can kind of get used to being how you kind of are, which also means that you kind of have to to know how you are. You got to kind of be okay with who you are. You know, a lot of people, I think they they their status and their value and their appreciation for themselves comes from a place of like, here's what I've done. Here's what I have achieved. <clears throat> and I'm going to, I'm going to be happy once I become the doctor. I'm going to be happy once I get a million dollars. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happier. And I don't think that you will be happier. Only if you get to a place where you don't have to be told what to do all the time. And you don't have to do things that you hate. I really believe that that's another thing. That we've been suckered into doing things. We think it's noble and honorable to do things that we absolutely hate. Sometimes, because the world is set up in a very... The world is a cold place, you could say. Or, or It's indifferent. It's not exactly cold, but it's just indifferent. It doesn't give you things. There is suffering, obviously. But I think people go about thinking that they need to, to trade time... All, you know, to do something they hate. There's a sort of gap between what they love to do and what they hate to do. And their life is kind of always split. It's like, I'm, I'm doing this thing I hate, and then I'll get to do the thing I love. But that's what I'm saying is like, a lot, then people start to think that their achievements are what make them good enough to function in the society. And, you know, they, they wear this mask that it's like, man, I got everything together. I'm this, I'm this, I do this. And damn, it's hard to really let that go, you know? It's hard to drop the mask and actually present like 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 it's harder it's probably the hardest to like yourself. You know what I mean? 
it's probably the hardest to like yourself. But that's another thing, dude. It's like the world kind of, you get your grow up and you, there's this thing that's going on where everyone's becoming an individual. We celebrate the individual. The individual person always has to care for himself. We're so individualized these days. What did you achieve? What diploma do you have? We're so individualized. Even the video games, dude, you play Call of Duty. What's your prestige? I'm better than you. It's always, the individual is always freaking competing in everything. Dude, always competing. Holy smokes. Always competing. It's like always a competition. And damn, imagine competing against 7 billion people. You're going to lose. It's crazy. And I think that the, the individuality, I mean, you see it, dude. I, I don't know, man. I see it in myself. You know, I see it in uh, a lot of the guys I talk to. Everyone's so individualized. Everyone's so concerned about me. We don't realize the power of the other people. We're always worried about how we're seen in the world because we don't actually have people we care about. And why is it, though, that, you know, honestly, probably my favorite thing to do is to be with family. Nice day outside. Everyone's out. Family's over. My aunt, she's making some hummus. She's got the, uh, she's rolling grape leaves. You know, my sister's in there. They're they're in there trying to make some cookies. You know, experience. me and my uncle, my uncle's showing me his new uh, beer that he has on tap. Getting some beer, you know, we're talking, we're hanging out. Dude, these people, you know, it's a damn shame that, that, that we've kind of let us be like this, this rare occasion that we get to meet up. But that's the most meaningful thing, you know? Like like when you're with people that you care about and you're laughing and you're having fun and you kind of forget yourself, you kind of mend, you kind of you kind of like you're in the group. You're like with the group, you're one with the group. I mean, you know, even it's just so individualized, man. Like even the house I'm in, the apartment I'm in, it's like we're all in this hive. There's boxes, right? But no one actually knows each other. No one really cares to know each other, which is fine. But how much anxiety does it... I mean, that's got to cause some anxiety, you know? For an individual that's living. To be... To know that there's like all of these people in the world, but you're actually alone. You're just kind of, just kind of living. You're alone. And so you, you try to find peace and you try to, you try to work and you try to like, you try to like, you start to like battle yourself all the time because that's all you have. You know, you like, sometimes you get in a fight with yourself, you, you make yourself, oh, I'm no good. I'm no good. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm always angry. I'm doing these drugs. You like kind of like sabotage yourself, kind of hate on your own self. Dude, stop hating yourself, man. You know, if, if you are all you got, then you better start being okay with them. You know, dude, you got to be a bit crazy. You got to be goofy, you know. I mean, I mean, you know, I love, I love that, I love that comedians can do that. They can say some perverse, some dark stuff under the banner of I'm a comedian and we find it funny, but we don't take it too seriously. We don't, we don't, you know, cancel them out because they're comedians. They're allowed to say stuff. 
that is out of the norm, what breaks down. It's funny, you know? It's funny. Society's, it's not, man, this place is funny. So what do you do, man? What do you do? What do you, how, how do you have peace? Well, first, have peace with yourself. By the way, man, you guys got to read this book. Mishima. All right? Yukio Mishima. This is the book of the month in our Discord group last month. A bunch of guys read this together. This is my second read-through. I love this book. I think it's desperately needed for the men of today. You open the first page, who do you see? Daddy Omishima. <coughs> I don't care what you think about his political beliefs. I don't care what you think about him. This is a great book. And I think it gives you a, an aim. I think it gives you a goal. Make yourself more than just your mind. If you want to sum it up. Make yourself and your body a weapon. Don't neglect the body. It has its own intelligence. It has its own philosophy. Develop that. Get to know it. Be friends with your body. That's the importance of bodybuilding, strength training, fighting, martial arts, and health, nutrition. Son, is that you get to know your body. You get comfortable in your skin. And if you're comfortable in your skin, then you can, you can kind of, you can kind of be okay with the environment that you're in because now you're able to move in the environment where thoughts. Thoughts are just, they can't really move anything by themselves. And so you become, you make the body into this thing that can move the environment. And that gets noticed. It's real, man. Thoughts aren't real. They, you know, things are real. And that's, that's right from the book. Things are real. And I like that. Because a lot of us are in thoughts. By the way, that's one problem I have with audiobooks. And why I think actually reading a physical book is better. Maybe you've never thought about it. This occurred to me the other day. Is when you read from an actual book, your mind is looking at these little lines and dots and ink on a white piece of paper. And it has to turn, it has to see that through the eyesight. It has to process that into a mental image, into a thought. Which takes, you know... I mean, super fast. But when you listen to audiobooks, what are you getting? You're getting the thought itself. I mean, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're getting a, you're getting a noise. So you're similar. But it almost seems like there's less cognitive demand, less imagination. And there's less time that it takes to actually understand. So you're getting the thought. Boom. The thought, the thought, the thought. The word, the thought. Whereas here... There is no word. There's no noise. There just is. And you have to process that. So there definitely seems to be a deeper understanding from a book. And so you got to start with yourself. You know, and I hope you guys aren't listening to this video by now. Get to the point. There is no point, man. There's no point. I'm just talking and hope that you guys are talking to yourself right now because you know life is good man but I think it could even be better when you can live with freedom you can live outside of a mental prison you can live being comfortable in your skin okay that's the real that's the real way to go to eliminate this baggage that you're carrying with you on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to be silly to be able to see society see the norms to be able to go against them and not just like go lay out on the concrete and act like an idiot you don't do it again to just like you know oh i'm gonna go out lay on the sidewalk and get over my fears bs because daily life requires that you you don't lay on a sidewalk. It requires that, okay, you go and you 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 make the phone call or you go and like you talk to the hot girl. Like that's I think talking to a hot girl is harder than laying on the sidewalk. Like let's just be real. And the importance of getting out of your own way. 
and being at peace with yourself, being calm. And, and I, I don't like that word. I like love yourself. Why don't I like that word? It just sounds kind of weird. Like, what is that? Even? Love yourself. Accept. It. But not just accept, like, like, be it. Like, be okay being it. And don't be too worried about it. And the importance of that is because if you can, if you can get out of your own way, then it allows you to operate in the matrix with freedom. Dude, remember when Morpheus he's starting to believe. He's starting to believe. What's going on, Neo? He's over here flying. He's able to I know Kung Fu. He's starting to believe. He's starting to believe that he can function in a way where there aren't limitations. This is the pirate's life, man. This is the high through most lifestyle I've been trying to I've been trying to paint and I think that you have to, I think we got to bring it back to you know you, you have to be okay with yourself or there will always be limitations. You can't you may have some things you think are flawed but you you don't want to be at war with yourself because it's so limiting because everyone is because then you will just then you always then that ruins your peace you want you want to have the ability to be a man in the world and to be okay being seen and that was actually one of the the big reasons that I made everyone, me and Gio, we said, hey, everyone needs to show their face. Because they need to be seen. They need to believe. There's no reason not to show your face. There's no fear. There's no, no one's coming to kill you. And if they do, then let it be. No one's, like, there's no reason, man. Especially if you want to get in a group with other guys. You need to believe. You need to be okay being seen. And you can't let, and, and these, these limitations, just get, get rid of them. And realize that then you can start functioning. Then you can show up. Then you can realize you're not too short. You're not too ugly. You're not too flawed. You're not any of those things, man. You have to believe. This is your one life. You can do anything. You have massive potential. You put your mind to it, you can do it. Happiness Calmness, I think calmness and fulfillment. It seems like calmness, fulfillment, lack of stress, that's happiness. Happiness isn't this scale, I don't think. I'm going to be happier. No, you want to be calm, you want to have fulfillment. Okay, that's low stress. Some stress is good though. You need that too to be happy. Right? To be calm and fulfilled, you don't need much. And you can attain those things if you just try, you can move the world, you can shape it if you try. That's all it is. And sometimes it takes time because sometimes you're in bad, bad positions. Your the life has put you in a certain position where it wants to show you. And it doesn't want you to be there and, and just like be all alone in yourself. It wants you to like or to be so wrapped up thinking about me, me, me. It wants to like show you and teach you lessons. And and part of that is just being humble, man. Not thinking you know it all. It wants you to it wants to teach you a lesson. And then it shows you the next thing. And the next thing. And the next thing. And that's the way. That's the Tao. The path will be made clear. And that's life. And, and you continue life, you bring in new life, and you continue, you help life, you help the life that is here, you help build up, create, that's what it is, it's a very simple thing, so have peace man, have peace.
That's it, man. That's it. I think that's all. I think I just want to talk. Some stuff that I've been thinking about myself. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll see you soon. Peace.